What's up YouTube? Dustin from DC Media, and this is another part of our beginner's guide on how to select PC parts. In this video, we're gonna talk about CPUs because there's over a thousand different SKUs of CPUs from Intel and AMD from past and current generations, and it can be rather daunting for the first time going through these CPUs to figure out what you actually need for what you're going to be doing. The first thing you really need to do is sit down and figure out what are you going to do with this PC once it's built? You know, are you going to be uh, doing some light gaming, um, like MOBA games, like League of Legends, things like that, with some internet browsing? Is it gonna be a workstation? Or are you gonna be doing graphic design and content creation with video, uh, video editing and rendering and such? Uh, or perhaps you're going to be, you know, playing AAA titles and streaming. You know, you have to figure out what you're going to do because once you have that game plan, it becomes amazingly simplistic on what you realistically need. Now, if you go looking on the internet, everyone's going to tell you you need i7 from Intel and the highest overclocked k skew and then overclock it some more. And, you know, that's what everybody's going to say you need. Or maybe, you know, the AMD camp's going to say you need to have 1800X or, you know, whatever it is that you know their high end is going to be that particular year or whatever that's not exactly true and on top of that it can be very costly to get those parts and if you're not an overclocker there's no point in having some of those and if you're not going to be utilizing all those cores and the higher core clocks you know if not going to be if you're not going to be using you know overclocking there's no point in getting those particular SKUs or if you're not going to be using all those cores and their and their higher frequencies there's no point in spending that kind of money especially if you're just building a PC to see if you even like PC gaming um, there's a lot of you guys that are going to be coming that are starting to consider this going from console to PC you're trying to figure out the lowest price you can build a PC for to see if it's even what you like well cheap as you can go is that dual core Pentium for $60, again, it'll be linked in the description below. That is the cheapest that you can get. And it still performs really well. You can still get 1080, uh, 60 FPS with, you know, up. you can go up to a GTX 1060 style graphics card before the CPU really starts becoming overwhelmed with what you're trying to push into it. Basically bottlenecked at the CPU. Now, after you consider what you're going to be doing, it's pretty simple. You know, how many cores are you realistically going to need? And the higher frequency of those cores, typically the better performing. And the higher up in the CPU selection you go, you typically get more cash, which makes the system run faster. So if you're doing something entry level, you're not going to have the craziest, fastest PC on the planet. But it will get you into what you're looking at. And now that kind of brings us into the next idea, because you're probably budget-minded at this point, should you buy older SKUs, used or new, compared to something that just came out? Now, the problem with buying older SKUs is a couple different things. If you're buying new, you're probably overpaying for it, and there's no reason for that. If you're buying used, you know, say you buy a used CPU, which you can get a great deal on, there's no problem with that, but you might have an issue finding a motherboard that will support that socket and the chipset with you know, all of the, uh, the extras that you want the motherboard to have. Most of you guys are going to want at least a USB 3.0. Depending on how far back you go in architecture for the CPUs, you might not even be able to get that support. And on top of that, like I said, motherboards can be kind of hard to find a few years out. So if you're going too far back, you might not be able to get a motherboard within a reasonable price. And you're going, what you saved in the CPU, you're just going to dump right back into a motherboard. So you really got to do due diligence when looking at whether buying new or buying used is the best option for you. Typically, I'm tell, I tell everyone for a CPU and motherboard, you're better off just buying the newest current generation unless you know someone that's hooking you up with like a package deal and it's a really good price. Apart from that, I really don't see reasons for going with older stock as opposed to newer stock if you're buying something brand new for a brand new build. And here's my reason why. Let's say you're on a super budget, $400, so you're going to get that Pentium $60 CPU. No problem. If you actually like gaming, you can step up to an i3 or an i5 or even an i7 in that same motherboard and have no issues. You can upgrade the RAM, you can upgrade a graphics card at that point, and there's all kinds of things you can do to make your 
rig perform even better and you don't have to really replace everything in the system. Now, that that's just my viewpoint. That's not saying that's right for everybody. That's just how I see it. There are a lot of great options in the used market and for the most part, you can build a pretty amazing system for five, $600 using older technology. So you gotta take that with a grain of salt. Now, if you're gonna be streaming, obviously you, you need more cores. You know, AMD right now is killing the gaming and streaming market under one PC. And that's what you're gonna be doing if that's what you're trying to do off the bat is streaming and gaming on the exact same PC. So you're pretty much gonna be over on the AMD side, but that's not to say Intel can't keep up. Their i7 series does extremely, extremely well. You're just lacking in cores. You have four physical cores and eight threads where on AMD side, you know, you can six and 12 or, you know, depending on what CPU you got, you, options are endless almost with AMD. And Ryzen's killing it. It's an amazing product. So, you know, if, if you're streaming, you know, you're looking for cores. If you're gaming, you really only need two cores with hyper threading for the most part. But ideally, I think the sweet spot is four cores and eight threads. Intel or AMD, it doesn't matter. I think that is honestly the sweet spot for most gaming currently. Can, are there some AAA titles out there that'll use six or more cores? Yes, there are, but there's not that many right now. And while you can consider future-proofing an idea, realistically, we're playing today, we're playing now, we're not playing tomorrow, and tomorrow technology might be completely different. So there's no reason to plan for tomorrow outside of maybe an upgrade path. And that's, you know, if you're looking at a motherboard and a CPU, then your upgrade path would be, you know, if you're doing an entry-level system, can you upgrade with the same motherboard without having to buy something new, without having to change RAM and your graphics card right away? Can you step it up in steps, like a step program? Of course you can. That is a good future-proofing idea. But if you're future-proofing and spending way over your budget just to get something that you think is going to perform better, there's not really a reason behind that. Because by time you're going to be utilizing those parts to their maximum capabilities, they're probably not even going to be what's, you know, the new, cool, or greatest thing, you know, at that time. Now, most CPUs outlive their motherboards and RAM, and they outlive their GPUs. So, of course, future-proofing from that side of things, if you don't want to purchase anything for some time, well, you probably got a little bit different things to consider. You can always run the highest i7 from Intel on the Z270 motherboard currently, and that'll get you a long way. It'll probably get you a few years at least, you know, probably three, maybe even four years, depending on how technology evolves. And on the AMD side, obviously, it goes a little bit further with like the 1800X or 1700 or whatever. You know, you're in the same boat. You have more cores. It's going to be more of a workhorse CPU, but it doesn't overclock as well as, as the Intel side. But clock speed isn't everything. So this is just a generalistic overview. And the most thing I can say is stay within your budget and just really hammer down on what you want to do with your PC. And if you're not sure, always come back to this video, comment down below, uh, either us or someone in the community will be glad to help you out. There's lots of forums and Facebook grops where you can also go. Heck, even Linus Tech Tips has a lot of great information, although you gotta take a lot of what, what is said with a grain of salt. Because in the PC world, you have fanboys. You know, in Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, whatever. You have the fanboys that are going to stick on one side or the other. And that's fine. They're, they have their, their reasons for it. But it complicates finding information out for yourself. So take everything you hear and you read with a little bit of a grain of salt. And just remember that at the end of the day, as long as you are comfortable with what you're purchasing, that's all that really matters. You know, you can always upgrade later or you can change things. It's something that's a little bit better than whenever you buy a console. Console, you buy a console, you're stuck with it. There's not really an upgrade path, at least not currently, although that might be changing with future consoles. And with, But with PCs right now, that is something that the PC world has over consoles. You can always upgrade, you can always change, and there's always innovations right around the corner. So with that being said, guys, just consider all the options. Do your research on whatever you're doing your PC for, and it'll make sure you get the right CPU. Don't believe the hype. And just don't believe all the hype that you read, that you have to have something more than what you realistically need. Four cores, eight threads, that's a sweet spot for just about everything. At least today it is. Tomorrow might be different, but we're talking about today. So thanks guys for watching this video. Hope to see you guys in the next one. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If not, thumbs down and consider subscribing if you like the content. See you guys next week.